Hey everyone! In today's episode, we're going to learn how to manage the user interface in 3ds Max using the Manage Workspace option. The Workspace Manager can help us to save different interfaces and quickly switch between them. We can include a combination of toolbars, menus, hotkeys, or even viewport layout. We can find the Workspace's drop-down menu in the top right corner of 3ds Max. If you have never changed this option, the default workspace is going to be selected. We can also see four additional workspaces. After selecting the Alt menu and Toolbar workspace, we can see that the interface is updated. In this case, the Scenes Plotter is docked below the Command Panel, and the main toolbar is split on the left side of the screen. If we select now the Design Standard workspace, the interface is going to change to show the most commonly used features and learning resources on the ribbon. If we select the other two options, Main Toolbar Modular and Modular Mini, we can see how the interface is updated. To create a custom user interface, I recommend starting with the default workspace. The first thing we need to know is that each workspace has a default state. We can imagine this as the last saved version of the workspace. For example, if we move one of the toolbars to the center of the viewport and turn off the ribbon, we can select in the workspace drop-down menu the reset to default state to get back to the last saved version of the interface. This is really useful if we don't like the changes we have done. For this example, we're going to create a new toolbar and assign some random Solborn script. If you want to know more about how to create toolbars, you can see my toolbars video in this link. I'm also going to leave the link to the three-part series of the Solborn scripts in the description. After this, we're going to move the new toolbar and the Corona toolbar to the left side of the screen. To save this interface in the default workspace, we're going to open the Manage Workspace dialog and click the Save Default States button. To test it, we can move one of the toolbars to the center of the viewport and then click the Restore to Default State button. We can see that the interface is restored to the last save state with the toolbars on the left side. Now that we know how the Default and Save States button work, we're going to create a new workspace. We're going to select the default workspace and click the Save as New Workspace button. In the new window, we can change the name of the new workspace. I recommend keeping the original workspace name plus some of the changes. Then click the OK button. On the right side of the Manage Workspaces dialog, we can change the properties of the active workspace. For example, we can change the name of the workspace or select which options to load. We can now update our user interface. We can change the location of the toolbars, remove tools by pressing right-click in an empty space and selecting the option to remove. For example, we can turn off the ribbon and the time slider. Once we're happy with the changes, we just need to press the Save Default State button. Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to click the like and subscribe button. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. And thank you for watching.